day YouTube, JD here, back for another Wednesday here on the Pagan Perspective. This week's topic is basically stereotypes of paganism. People think of the most craziest things. Um, I've had people literally ask me things like, do we meet in the woods and have orgies? Like literally asking that question. And it comes out of confusion, as you already know, of being sky clad. Even within the community, people feel um, kind of touchy about sky clad sometimes. Um, it's so wild. Um, for somebody out there who's listening, who thought that skyclad meant orgies and stuff, you can find them. You can find skyclad described in many different books. Uh, one author that comes to mind is Silver Silver Raven Wolf. Um, you can pick up one of her books, read some of those. You can type skyclad into the you know Google machine and look it up, and you know pull up everything that you can. Um, orgies, mass orgies, is not something that, as far as I know, people practice enlarged today um, if you do look at the person that's been kind of touted as the father of uh, witchcraft yes you know there were certain things that was found inside of his uh, kits and things uh, that there were things that were seen as kind of phallic there are um, certain rituals where there is like the symbolism of the male and female organs coming together but this is more of a nature type of thing this is more of a thing where nature or the circle of life i mean even lion king is a big example it's basically the circle of life the energies involved with that um, how the earth changes and becomes pregnant and gives birth to all of the different energies that we have and have in the spring it's to symbolize that it's not really about open sex orgies and things another thing uh, that we get a lot of um, stereotypes from and it, it does stem from a, a movie that I'm sorry a show that debuted a couple of years ago called Salem oh that show gets my blood boiling it's, it's written so well it's crazy on one of the first couple episodes they had this evil devil looking thing in their minds with me my first thought was wait a minute that's pan what are they doing and it was crazily offensive. A lot of people feel it's a stereotype. They feel like Pan is the devil. They have to do their research. They, and you will learn that Pan literally was a god, a deity that was served before the Christians came. Okay? And the Christians literally twisted it and, and basically showed that Pan was their devil. People were killed. They were persecuted. Anyone that had these kind of statues and things, anything, anyone that had writing... They had to force themselves to kind of become Christian in a way and kind of put it in the background or they would be killed. Uh, I, I want that to be very, very clear to, to some people out there who may not understand that Christians back in the day literally would kill you. You would be dead. They would dismember you. The witch hunt, uh, the Salem witch trials, those things were leftover pieces from stuff that happened in Europe they were killing people there's songs about this and some people disagree um, about the, the amount of people that were killed but you'll hear it in songs from Spiral Dance where they talk about all of the women that were killed all of the women that were burned and hung and tortured because they thought that they were these evil witches when in reality they were the midwives they were the shaman they were the people who were taking care of uh, people in the village who didn't have a good grip and understanding on herbology so I just wanted to address that really quickly because we get that a lot we get people saying oh but th that's a worship you're worshiping the devil understand that fear is the biggest way to brainwash and control people um, if you're somebody who's watching this video and you wanted to hear about um, some of the stereotypes if, if you've heard that witchcraft or Wicca or other earth-based religions are devil worshiping understand that that was it that was by design to scare you away from it um one of the other hosts uh, i believe rich mentioned divination i too have a ouija board i too have tarot cards and i have been told that since i was a little kid i've always had that struggle especially growing up in a very christian baptist black um black uh, community they always say don't get spell books don't take the Ouija board. Don't touch tarot cards. It's of the devil. There is a passage in the Bible, and I'm going to see if I can look it up. I'm trying to put it like here, just for people who are still partial and connected with the Bible, where the 
advice of a spirit was sought by King Lot, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, he, he, sought that, he sought that advice because the God of the Bible, uh, which could be Yeshua, it could be um, Elohim, it could be Allah, a lot of them are connected. Um, basically told, basically didn't want anyone to get involved in divination because of number one, they know that it works. And number two, it kind of takes the power out of their God. If you're still partial to this religion of Christianity, you can look it up again here and read it. And you'll learn that he literally hired someone, a, a witch who had, who he had persecuted. He persecuted these witches, killed many of them, but he found one and this, and this one connected him with a spirit that gave him important information that his Christian God was not willing to give him. It's in the Bible. And the information he got was that he was going to die if he kept trying to go to war. This mad king went to war anyway and died. Okay? Because of that, to this day, Christians who take the Bible literally are still afraid of any type of witchcraft. It's more of an education thing. When you don't understand something, you are afraid of it. That's kind of why we do these videos. We give you our unique perspectives on the way we see things. We give you sources. A lot of people put the sources down below. I'll just throw that Bible verse up there so you can read it for yourself. I recommend looking at a few different translations if, if you have the time. Um, the New Living Translation kind of puts it in the most English way. But in almost every translation, you will see that it talks about... Uh, people are using any kind of magic or trying to connect with the dead. Now, I do want to address that stereotype as well because a lot of people uh, mention that the Bible mentions killing witches. So that there are there are some times out there where people are being physically assaulted. Um, I myself was in a small town. I was in Williamsburg. I'll just put it that way. And I was having a spiritual conversation and you know, I, I was connecting it with a couple TV shows. You guys have seen me talk about what's magic um, around Na Naruto and things. And I've had people who literally were very upset about some of the things that I was saying. So I've learned to kind of tone that down or not talk too openly about certain things, which is what you should do. You don't want to get hurt. But I bring it up because the, there's a stereotype that, that, that uh, Christians should hurt witches. Um, and I'll and again I'll find that right there, put it here so you can read it for yourself again. And um, from what I understand, the people who have done the research and they've read the different translations, it, what it meant was a sorcerer. See, there's a big difference between sorcery, necromancy, and and the divination and actually herbology. See, they these people didn't understand the difference between these things. When you think of sorcery, it's people using spirits for the wrong thing. Okay. Somebody who's really well-versed with working with the dead can get certain people on the other side that are more inclined to harm. And you can send these people, these spirits, after your target, and they will hurt them. However, you will have to pay the karmic price. You know, it, the whole um, things return to you th threefold that will happen if you engage in sorcery in that way. It may not affect you in this lifetime, but when you come back again, you could be in a terrible situation because you use sorcery like that. So I just wanted to certainly address that before this video gets too long. Um, I also want to talk about uh, <laughs> drug use by shaman. I've had people who were very afraid to go on a shamanic journey when I mentioned it because they think that I'm going to use some kind of drug and we're going to go crazy with LSD and things. It's hilarious. I don't condone the use of drugs in order to go on shamanic journeys because I see it as a bit of a crutch. However, there's been many rich and very storied and powerful traditions who use certain hallucinogens to go on a shamanic journey. I myself use binaural beat programs. That works very effective for me. So my position on drug use has changed a bit. It's evolved. I see it as being okay if you use it occasionally so that way you can reach these realms. But I feel like if you're going to use them, you need to kind of move toward other alternatives that are more healthy or use something that is not a harm to you, such as cannabis. 
you may not like cannabis you may hate cannabis again sort of like the uh, Christian thing you may feel like cannabis is evil but a lot of people use it to open doorways to these other realms um, and there are, there are a couple other chemicals that are very powerful in that uh, respect and I feel like their use is all right so long as you're not using them on a frequent basis and you're with somebody who knows how to help you if you go too crazy with your freak outs and things so that's my position on that and this video is getting very long so I think I will close on the stereotype of there being many homosexual people um, in pagan religion in general and what I'll say about that is I feel like there's many men and women out there right now who are either bicurious or homosexual in nature however their religion has created such a rift between them, their family, and their, what they know they are in their hearts. And it's really sad. You've got people out there, as we speak, as I speak right now, thinking about killing themselves because they were told that they weren't worth the love of their family and their God because someone said that, that their attraction is an abomination before their God. So that is something I will definitely put up here. I'll show you the Bible verse where it talks about that. And that is a huge, huge misconception in, a, in something that's been taken way out of context with the Bible. The Bible does not mean to kill people who engage in homosexual activity. When it says that you are, when it says that uh, a man sleeping with another man is an, is an abomination before God, that's what a lot of Christians say, which I'll say, I'll put the actual uh, Bible verse here, read it for yourself, read it, read a couple different translations, look at the New Living Translation, it literally means that there won't be any procreation, so the people will die out because they aren't having children, that's what it originally thought, it was a warning because so many men engaged in homosexual relationships. So many men back then did that. They had a wife, but they also took a man. Because it's totally natural. You find it in the animal kingdom. You find it in the animal kingdom where some animals switch over to men. Some animals switch over to women. Some women do the same thing in the animal kingdom. It's a very natural thing. But because of that one or two Bible verses, people lost their mind. And they use it as a means of control. So now you have all this guilt sitting in the hearts of all these young people who are taking their lives left and right. Paganism has kind of been a bit of a safe haven for these people because they realize that they don't need the love of some god that was willing to burn them the moment they take action on a very natural uh, process. I figured I wanted to touch on those uh, stereotypes that I find that are near and dear to my heart because these things it, it, it's causing people to kill themselves and that's way too much that's not helping anybody and it's based off of a improper education on what the Bible really means thank you so much for watching this video it's a wonderful question I really want to know what you guys and girls think please leave some comments down below L let me know if you agree with me let me know if you don't agree with, agree with me and why. Go ahead and post some of your sources down there too because if you have a different outlook on this, I want to know what you're thinking and somebody who's looking at this video might need the encouragement that you, that, that you have about what source you have connected with the topics that I've just talked about. So if you could put them down there, that, that would be wonderful. Once again, thank you so much for watching this video. You have a great rest of the week and blessed be.